DD1 video training part three. This time we're going to use the DD1 to try to find maximum unclipped volume setting of the head unit and set 10 dB of overlap on the sample fire. But this time we're in a car that has a line output converter like this here. So now we're using the high level outputs of this head unit into this line level converter. Now RCA is from this plugged into our amplifier. So this would be a typical, you know, low dollar install. So we put on track one, 40 hertz, zero dB. Now we know on the other, in the other videos that volume 47 was clean on this head unit. So we were able to go up to 47. So let's see how far we can get this time. Well, distortion light's already starting to come on. One more click and it's on pretty good, a couple clicks. But it's already there. So the idea is you turn it up till the light goes off, which would be like pretty much never, like right there. That's volume setting 18. So looks like there's a problem here because pretty much any volume setting over 18, it shows distortion. And we know this head unit is clean by itself up to volume 48. But here it's not. So what is going on? Well, you can see this says distortion. The input clip light on the amplifier is not on. Look at the signal coming into this amplifier. That's what's coming in from this line output converter. Those lights on the amplifiers that are supposed to help you set gains will never tell you about something like this. This is why having a true distortion detecting device is so nice. And even if this, if you had a, one of those handheld scopes and it looked like, it looked like that. Let me stabilize the oscilloscope here. If it looked like this, you would probably just say, oh, it looks good to me, that's a clean sine wave because those little handheld scopes don't have enough resolution to see how distorted that sine wave really is. Once again, DD1 calls it out right away. So, let's say that we went through the normal setup procedure. That would be turn the head unit up till the distortion light comes on, then back it off. It's at volume 20. And then you're supposed to change to the overlap track, which is... 10 dB track is track 5, and you turn the gain of the amplifier up. So let's turn it up so we get distortion, back it off. So this would be, if we uh, didn't know any better what was going on, we would end up with this result. You can see I'm having trouble when I back the gain off, this light keeps staying on. So there it's off. Uh, and you can see we don't have a whole lot of output here. 5.6 volts of output is what we were able to set it up to cleanly. And that's again because this piece is not it's not great. Now if we were to use the setup features in this amplifier to do this, let's see where we would end up. We'd probably end up with more gain than this since it wasn't detecting the input clipping. So I keep turning it up. Oh, I've got to turn this down first. Turn it up till that light comes on down there. And back it off so we'd be about there and then by the way look at uh, that's what it's telling us to set it to and then we would turn the overlap track on track 5 and then we would gain this up until this light turns blue on the amplifier here and then let's see what our result is so just turning blue okay so our result is that we're getting 27 volts out but it's that. It's 27 volts of basically a triangle wave. So both of these situations is bad. So DD1 was saying all along because you could plug the head unit output directly in here and you would find that the volume setting is 47 where it's clean and you could detect your problem as being this device right here. So we just wanted to put that video out there. We get a lot of calls about, hey, my distortion light is on all the time. Well, if you have one of these in your car, that's probably why. Thanks for watching.